Hello, um, this is Fernando Perdomo, and uh, I am uh, answering questions from Joel Barrios about my new album, which is called Out to Sea. Um, and I'm excited about this album, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about it a little bit. Despite mostly known in the prog world as Dave Kirshner's partner in crime, your last two studio albums, The Golden Hour and Voyeurs, explored a different side of your musical spirit, levitating more towards pop than rock. Now you've presented a full-blown instrumental prog rock record, which I'm sure will be a delight in many. Why the direction changed this time around? Um, my records are very personal to me, and uh, I don't actually consider it a direction change. I just consider it a different side of my personality. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of different types of music. Prog rock has always been something I've been into, but uh, I love power pop music. I love progressive pop music, and I love rock and roll. And uh, I've done a little bit of all. Um, I was in a band called DC3 for a while that was a straight up uh, rock and roll band um, playing bass. Uh, I was in a band called Transcendence, so it was kind of like a David Bowie thing. Um, I was uh, working with an artist named Hilary McRae, who was kind of like a jazz rock artist. And uh, I worked with a group called Price, which was kind of like a rock art, a rock, straight ahead rock band. Um, I decided to make my first solo album, Dreaming in Stereo, um, right after the Hillary project fell apart. Uh, she was on Starbucks Records and I, I quit the project and I, I um, decided to make a record that was for myself that had every side of my personality. And that record is very progressive, however it did have a lot of power pop in it. So uh, a little bit of everything basically. Um, so out to sea is for the first time a fully progressive album of my music um, without that pesky power pop music I like to do as well. I'm never going to stop writing pop songs, I'm never going to stop singing. However, I needed to make an album that explored my melodic sensibility and my guitar playing. So everybody who's a fan of my guitar playing, this is the record to get. Um, I'm very inspired by it and uh, it really came together great. I'm really happy with it. The album title is Out to Sea, and the cover was painted by acclaimed artist Paul Whitehead, notorious for his work on Genesis covers like Trespass, Nursery Crime, and Foxtrot. How did the album title come to be, and how does it feel to have an Whitehead cover adorning your music? Well, um, the album, idea for the album happened in um, Hawaii while I was there for the vacation for, for Christmas uh, with my girlfriend, and... Uh, I uh, had explained to a few people about the record, and my friend Eric Nielsen had said, you should have Paul Whitehead do a cover for you. And I've always been a huge fan of his work. I love Trespass. It's my favorite Genesis record. You know, and Foxtrot and Nursery Crime. Come on, those are three of the greatest records of all time, in my opinion. And three of the best covers of all time. And when I found out that Paul not only was, had something that could work for my album but that I could afford to work with him and that it was like a, a, a decent situation and that he loved my music, I felt like it was a no-brainer. I went to his website, he told me I could license something and he had this amazing painting of a guitar-shaped sailboat. And uh, I liked it, it was a different one. And then he says, I have another one. And this one was perfect because it's heading towards a volcanic island. So it's uh, it, it actually has a lot to do with the inspiration of the record. So that's really exciting, really happy for me. Um, Out to Sea, the, the, the album title Out to Sea and the song Out to Sea had a lot to do with that album cover. Uh, looking at that album cover and uh, uh, putting together the theme of the album and the, the general vibe of that song. Um, so thanks Paul for not only creating the most amazing album cover I've ever had, but for inspiring, in many ways, that song and the title of the album. The album's first track is called The Architect, a tribute to Peter Banks, who was also known as the architect of progressive music. How much Peter's music influenced you, and how would you describe the song for those who haven't heard the album? First of all, um, when I got into prog music, I started buying as much prog as I could, and there was a record store in Miami called Revolution Records um, that I used to go to when I was... 11, 12, 13, 
And uh, one day, I was stumbling through the records and I found Flashes in the Can. Now, mind you, I bought this record before I heard the first two Yes albums. So this was my introduction to Peter Banks' guitar playing. And as much of a Steve Howe fan as I am, and as I was back then, this record blew my mind. And uh, there's something about Peter Banks' guitar playing that just inspires me so much. Maybe it's the fact that it's got a little bit of a aggressive, like, it's a little more aggressive in my opinion than, than a lot of other guitar players in the pog genre. Um, he was such an intense player and such a loud player that it really inspires me. And also, I love Major Seven of Chords, and he was a big fan of Major Seven of Chords, and um, that started off my obsession with his guitar playing, because then I bought the first Yes album, which I adore, and the time is a, time and a word, and then I got all the other Flash records, and as much as I love In The Can, the album Out Of Our Hands is one of my favorite albums of all time, and I love it the most. I feel like it's a complete overlooked masterpiece. And then I got into Empire, because One Way Records had an Empire reissued in 96. I bought all of them, and uh, my obsession was officially complete. Two, both si two Sides of Peter Banks, amazing record. All the solo stuff. You know, Peter was amazing, and I will always uh, regret not meeting him, because I think we would have gotten along really well, and I would have loved to have made some music with him. And uh, basically, all the tribute tracks on my album are exercises in the style, not only the guitar playing, the drumming and bass playing and keyboard playing and the general uh, compositional style of each artist. And with The Architect, I wanted the song to flow, yet have a lot of different parts and have influences from jazz, influences from funk, influences from a bunch of different things, and I feel like it's um, a good introduction to the guitar style and the songwriting style of Peter Banks. Rest in peace. Um, one of the most amazing guitar players who ever set foot on stage or in a studio. I love him forever um, and uh, I hope uh, all his fans really dig what I did. The album title song is next on the record and your guitar playing on this one some kind of reminds me of Steve Hackett. Where did the inspiration come from when pulling this together? Okay. Um, Out to Sea was an idea that I had about 15 years ago um, that I remembered about and I finally put it together and wrote some new stuff to it and uh, it's completely inspired by the cover. Um, originally it had a completely different vibe. As far as the guitar playing on that record, on that song, it is, most of the guitar playing on my record is inspired by Steve Hackett, um, and he's a huge influence on me. However, on that song, I think I could pinpoint a few guitar players that you might not expect. Um, Greg, Ch Greg Chiquiso of, um, of Starship, Jefferson Starship, big influence on me, and I do a few things that he does that are very exciting and I, I did some of those things on this track and there's a section of the song where I go into three-part harmony on guitar which was totally inspired by John Luke Ponty and the especially the album Enigmatic Ocean so the guitar playing on that is inspired by a guy named Alan Holdsworth a guy named Daryl Sturmer that most of you will know about from Genesis and also the amazing Jamie Glazer, who I just got to work with in my project uh, Life on Mars with Earl Chaos. The music of John Luke Ponty is in my veins. Um, I bought Enigmatic Ocean when I was 10, and um, John Luke is a huge melodic influence on me. I absolutely adore him. And uh, what can I say about John Luke? He is um, one of the greatest musicians ever, and in many ways, his violin playing has influenced me. So, um, that song has a lot of Jean-Luc in it, especially when it goes into three-part harmony. And uh, I also, it is inspired also by The Who. I, uh, I was inspired by The Who a lot by Tommy, so it has a little bit of the overture feel. 
The third track, The Border Eye, starts off with a soft and mellow acoustic guitar, later morph into very focused-esque rhythm and lovely guitar to sprinkle on top. What's the story about this one? Very simple. Uh, in 2016, was it 16? Yes, last year. Uh, was it 15? Hmm. I don't remember last time. Uh, when Dave Kersner played the Prague Dreams Festival in uh, lovely Netherlands, in Zutmeer, we got to open for Focus. And that was one of the biggest thrills of my life because it was my first time seeing Focus. And I was absolutely blown away. And uh, one of the coolest things ever was Kiss Van Leer watching me play and then me watching him play. And we drummed up a nice friendship and uh, I wanted to give back to that band. So uh, The Border Eye is... Um, very much uh, inspired by Focus, and I feel like it's the uh, most European sounding song on the record, and uh, it has some really cool moments in it, and I want it to be very elegant, and in uh, many spots in that song, it sounds almost uh, medieval. I really like it. The fourth track, Roses Spread All Over the World, is a, I guess that's the ballad of the, of the album, and uh, in many ways it was inspired by uh, Denise Romano Bright, who is one of my fans, who crochets roses for people, and uh, her mission statement with the roses is, roses spread all over the world to spread love and peace. So in many ways that inspired the song. Um, I wrote it pretty much on the spot when I was um, handed a guitar to tune during a session for a client I produced a friend of mine named Ken Sharp and I just started playing these chords and I recorded them and um, it was on a Nashville guitar which is uh, it's called a high strung guitar basically it's a, a very dainty and very pretty and sounding instrument where it's only high strings uh, there's no low strings, so it sounds like almost like a mandolin, almost like a 12 string with not a lot of bass. And that's what kind of inspired the song. And uh, features some sitar playing, uh, electric sitar, um, and uh, acoustic guitar playing, acoustic guitar solo. And yes, that's very much inspired by Steve Howe. Um, I wanted it to sound like something that could be on Beginnings, one of my favorite records of all time. Also, maybe Steve Howe album but it definitely has that early Steve Howe sound. After the passing of Roy Albertine in 2016, I was truly heart heartbroken. Nectar, uh, Nectar had a very big influence on paving the Prague rock movement in the 1970s. I believe it was shameful no one has written a song as a tribute to his enormous legacy until now. Future according to Roy, Roy Future like, feels like a hidden bonus track from Remember the Future, written back in 73. Want to tell us more about it? Okay. Another record I bought as a child was A Tab in the Ocean, A Nectar. And I played that record to death. I love it. And then I just explored the other records. And then I got to play on the cruise to the edge with Nectar. And Roy blew me away. And I'm so sad that um, he passed on. I'm so glad I got to see him twice on that. On that. And I wanted to give back to his legacy. So what I've done is I created a song based mostly on the musical style of Remember the Future. And it's basically a celebration not only of the style of Roy's guitar playing, which is very unique, but I also wanted to capture the general vibe of that band, which I feel is psychedelic prog um, and very funky. I mean... What other prog band had a fan like Sherman Hensley dancing to their music on the Jeffersons? That's incredible. Um, and I feel like it's one of the funkiest things I've ever done. And I'm very proud of the playing on that, on that song. It's really cool. Um, and uh, I hope all fans of Nectar will dig it. And I hope that uh, it helps preserve the memory of Roy. Love you, man. The Dream. Now, this is the only track on the record where someone else plays something. And the reason is that The Dream was originally uh, released on an album that I put together, an EP called Dreams, 
which is kind of prog, but really it was kind of like a, a my own style of instrumental prog that was a little softer, and I've beefed up the song, and uh, originally, you know, I intended on playing every instrument on it, but that song just... Eddie Zine, who's the drummer in Dreaming in Stereo for Dreaming in Stereo 2 and other things with Dreaming in Stereo, who used to be the drummer for Hollow Notes and Fog Hat, he is such an incredible drummer and he did such a great job that I decided to keep his drums and re-record a lot of the other things on it. And uh, it's just amazing and I can't think of anybody else playing that song. Eddie's just incredible. And uh, uh, you know, I, I could have re-recorded the whole thing myself. But I, I love the performances on that, so I decided to keep it the way it is, and uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful song, and I really feel like uh, it's one of my favorites on the record. It's got some beautiful layers. I played pedal steel on that one, and I feel like uh, that one's a good example of my personal style. There's a lot of tributes on the album, but that one's personal to me. Uh, very melodic, uh, in many ways inspired by um, 70s TV music. I love 70s chord changes, so it's a little bit of everything on that one. You had the chance to perform live with Curb Dare Sonia Christina during the last Cruise to the Edge celebration 2018. Uh, it was 2017, technically. And I know that was a huge movement in your career, but on stage with one of your musical idols, does the song Sonia draw inspiration from that live collaboration? Yes and no. Um, back in Revolution Records, I found a very interesting record that's up on my wall right here, right there, and that's Curve Dare's second album. And I had heard of Curve Dare because I was a huge King Crimson fan. I had known about Eddie Jobson um, being part of Curve Dare and that Curve Dare were, were kind of like modern luminaries of, you know, modern, they were a good companion piece to King Crimson and Yes and all that stuff. And, I absolutely fell in love with that record and bought everything Curve Dare had by the time I was 14. To the point where one of the first recordings I ever did on a four track machine was a cover of Puppets off that album. So uh, Curve Dare is in my blood um, and Sonia is one of my favorite musicians of all time. I feel like one of my favorite composers of all time and uh, I wanted to give back because this song is also inspired not only by the music but by the way that she is on stage the rhythm of Sonia is actually inspired by the way she sways on stage and the way she commands the audience um, one of the most incredible performances I've ever seen in my life was Sonia performing on Cruise to the Edge all the video of her performing in the 70s is mesmerizing she is stunning and she still sounds incredible and looks incredible and uh, I hope to work with her more and uh, there might be something in store um, so that's just me giving back again to the people that influenced me. Dreaming in Stereo was a Miami-based promising band of talented musicians and songwriters active during the early and mid-2000s. Um, the last song is entitled Dreaming in Stereo Suite. Was that one put together as a mashup of ideas and melodies you had already had in mind, never developed in Dreaming in Stereo, or is a completely new composition? The answer is the f six pieces of Dreaming in Stereo Suite are all on the first Dreaming in Stereo album and a little bit on the second Dreaming in Stereo album. Uh, these are the proggiest things I did for that band. And I took the vocals out and I turned it into an instrumental, 15 minute instrumental piece. So um, the pieces are Sea Dreams, Misery Loves Companies, Misery Loves Companies, Steal This Song, Half Dead, Goodwill, and Amicable. And these are some of the proggiest things I've ever written, and I decided that I wanted to put it together in a 15 minute suite to close the album. And it's pretty damn epic, and I'm very inspired by it, and I'm very happy how it flows. I wasn't expecting it to flow so well, especially with a ballad and a kind of like a movie film uh, piece in it, and it still flows very well. And um, what can I say? It's a, it's a piece that's designed to take you somewhere as in a multi-level dream and that's basically the sound of it and I'm very proud of that one so the final question is when does this thing come out very simple I'm setting the release date for the 9th of February 
which is the Friday after the Cruise to the Edge comes back. Uh, Pre-orders are going to start on Friday with the release of The Architect, which is going to be the first single. And the pre-orders are going to be on Bandcamp.com, FernandoPernoma.Bandcamp.com. You'll see lots of promo on all the Prague Facebook pages, and uh, this is going to be fantastic. I'm also looking into doing a vinyl version of the album, and also uh, putting together a project to be able to perform the stuff live. But for now, Out to Sea is going to come out on the 9th of February, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, I'm uh, waiting on some news on whether I'm going to be able to sell them on the boat, but for sure you'll be able to get them on the 9th of February and I really couldn't be more excited. Thank you so much Joel for these great questions and I will see you out on the boat in their cruise to the edge and also Prague Dreams in Netherlands on uh, March I'm sorry on, on March 3rd and uh, there's way more in store for Dave Kersner band there's way more in store for me including some huge surprises in my personal life uh, involving music um, I have a lot of projects that are not even announced yet, and lots of albums I'm producing, and uh, some other projects that I have under my hat. So, much love to all of you in the Prague community. Thank you so much, Joel, and I will see you guys soon. Enjoy my album, Out to Sea.